I'd like to welcome everyone to this episode of Leaning Into Discomfort with Middlebury Athletics. I'm Mike Leonard. I'm the head baseball coach and also student advising head here at Middlebury. My pronouns are he and him, uh, and I'm really excited to be here with all of you. Hey, I'm Victoria. I'm a senior on the women's track and field team, pronouns she, hers. I am Tyler Linen. I'm a freshman on the baseball team. So today our topic is talking about anxiety. And, you know, I wanted just to start off by uh, thanking Tyler and Victoria for being here. I think it's so important that in athletics and in, in our in our world that we're, we're destigmatizing some of these these behaviors as as negative things and knowing that anxiety is is something that's a real problem and, and so pervasive, um, trying to create this space to kind of talk about it. And I think in athletics, one of the things that I've learned as a coach is you can see behaviors that you can label and make assumptions to where those behaviors come from. And it becomes really important that we, we do not do that. And, and we're trying to be in this space of really trying to understand each person's unique lived experience and, and unique behaviors um, so that we can fully support that. And, and I think that in, in games and in sports, there's often times where um, we can draw comparisons to certain behaviors and label them in a certain way, but not really understanding what that person is going through um, can be dangerous. So working on creating that space where we have those honest conversations and really understand where everyone's coming from and they can feel totally supported. Yeah, so um, thank you for the introduction, Mike. And I can give a little bit of my own experience dealing with anxiety and so on, because it does manifest differently in everyone. For me, I've always been a bit of an anxious person in high school is more of a social anxiety thing in college. It's really like what most people um, get stressed about, school, athletic performance, relationships, and so on. Um, but it sort of shifted in college in a weird way, whereas before I'd sort of just carry it around with me, but I don't know, could sort of handle it. It started appearing like in the evenings at nighttime. I'd be going to bed, lying down at like 12 p.m. And then slowly my mind would be like, you're an anxious person, don't forget. <laughs> it was just like thoughts that I shouldn't have been obsessing about would get stuck on loop in my brain. It would be like 1 a.m., 2 a.m. And I'd go out into Stu Hall and pace back and forth trying to like, I don't know, clear my mind and then lay down. It'll be 3 a.m., 4 a.m. So it was this weird, like, obsessive um, thought cycle that I wasn't really used to, wasn't sure how to handle. And it did sort of start affecting school and sports. There's a reason coaches, like, ask if you're getting your eight hours because I could feel how my body wasn't recovering and I was getting injured and in school, I was doing readings and couldn't really focus. I was like, what language did I sign up for? I don't understand what I'm reading right now. It, from being this one like weird, nauseous, overthinking feeling, it became something that did affect my performance and it became a little hard to verbalize because I was like, well, I'm not anxious right now during practice, but it's affecting my practices and so on. Yeah, I completely agree with Victoria on how anxiety can manifest itself in different ways like for me personally it's it becomes a uh, almost like a knot in my stomach and then it uh, can become can trans uh, transition into chest tightness and it's not just you know like oh 20 minutes before a game I got jitters I'm nervous it's the night before it's the day before you know it's multiple days before when you just know that that event's coming and you're already very anxious about it to the point where it's hindering, as Victoria alluded to, uh, you know, tasks that you have to do prior to the event. And that can become a problem. And it's just important, I think, to acknowledge that uh, the anxiety is there and that you can do certain things to try and help mitigate it slightly. You know, one of the, the skills that I've learned from doing this a long time is if I notice something that's happening, you know, so, I'm, you know, picture Victoria as one of my athletes and Tyler as one of my athletes and seeing, wow, you look more tired than normal, or you're not quite as focused as I normally see you rather than kind of like that addressing the whole team being like, Hey, Tyler, pick it up. I need more out of you. This isn't what I normally see. It's like a side conversation and it's, Hey, Tyler, here's what I'm seeing. You, you want to tell me about this? Like, is anything going on? So trying to invite that space in like a really comfortable place for the athlete and I to communicate so that I'm aware that this behavior isn't just, you know, Tyler, 
not caring about what we're doing or Victoria not being focused, that there's more to the story. Um, so I just wonder if you guys could talk a little bit about how you communicate with teammates and coaches and, and people who support you. I guess for me, since it was such a new sun thing, and I did feel confused about why am I sleeping three, four hours every night. I, it was very easy for me to tell my coaches and my trainer about it because it very immediately transitioned into my injuries and so on. And I was like, I need to give the full picture of why this is happening. Um, I know it isn't easy for everyone to just be like open about it and be like, hey, I think that I'm like, I don't know, moving more slowly, less focused because of this weird big thing going on in my life. But it, for me personally, it was very easy to open up to my trainers and coaches um, because it sort of helped me talk through how to approach what I was dealing with. I think uh, for me, given the, I guess, relative prevalence of anxiety and nervousness amongst college students as a whole, it kind of uh, turn me away from wanting to speak about it because it's, you know, well, I'm sure everyone gets nervous, you know, I'm just nervous, right? It's, I didn't feel like it was a personal thing and something that needed to be brought to attention because I felt like everyone felt like it. And even if everyone feels like it, you know, it's still okay to talk about it. It's still okay to bring it up to your coach, even if you feel like everyone else on your team, or at least a lot of kids on your team are feeling that way. It's not, oh, everyone feels this way. I just got to deal with it. You know, I, I'm not, you know, it's not important. It, it is important. And I think to coach Leonard's point, it's, you know, it's important to bring it up with your coaches. Thanks so much for saying that, Tyler, because I think that's, that's one of the dangers with, um, you know, when we talk about anxiety and issues of mental health, when we can kind of label that and, and kind of identify with some of those behaviors, like being nervous, might be like kind of a universal thing that all of us have experienced, but experience anxiety is completely different. So someone kind of looking at that from the outside and trying to self, you know, diagnose or kind of play, play the role of, of, you know, psychiatrist with that, like is really not helpful. And I think that's where like the professional resources on campus and, and having those people who can direct um, our student athletes there is so critical because this is no, you know, when we're talking about anxiety or mental health, getting support for that is no different than if you have a broken bone, you would clearly go to the doctor for that, right? And have, have a medical procedure done. But I think sometimes, you know, as you were talking, Tyler, we, we fall into this trap where like, no, nah, this isn't worth talking about. This isn't a big deal. Like this is everybody deals with this and it's just not the case. Definitely talking to the coaches was huge. Just knowing that they know and what I've felt like I was acting weirdly, which is sometimes itself a source of anxiety, like having that like, okay, maybe they can guess that it's because of this thing. Um, but then in terms of addressing the anxiety, one thing that has been huge for me is I picked up on like meditation and yoga practices, just learning how to not, doesn't necessarily make the feelings go away, but it's a way of stepping back from everything, focusing on like breath rather than all the thoughts and so on. Um, so that's probably the thing that has made the biggest difference for me. I, uh, I completely agree with Victoria about the importance of breathing and trying to calm me down. A couple of weeks ago on our, uh, in the first year student athlete uh, Zoom, Coach Leonard had on a guest and he talked a lot about breathing and he showed us different techniques. The the four, seven, four breathing and the box breathing. And after that, I've started to try and implement that more. And I know some of my other teammates have done that as well. And that's made a huge difference in just bringing you back to center and just focused and trying to eliminate the anxious and nervous thoughts. Yeah, I think a really important point that Tyler made is that it's really easy for a stigma to form around anxiety and it makes it hard for people to talk about it and so on. And um, everyone should, of course, be mindful of their own comfort levels, but it is great to just have someone to open up to. Um, and also for anyone who's struggling with it to think about like, what could I ask for from the coach? Like how, how do I best deal with this? And what 
kind of motivation or support do I need? Because people are always willing to help is what I learned. And it's so much easier when there's someone to talk to. And yeah, it makes the world of a difference for sure. I would agree that it definitely makes a huge difference to being able to talk about it. You know, in the era of Zoom, it's definitely a lot easier to be able to connect with coaches and not feel like, you know, you're trying to pull a coach aside at a practice and you're worried that, you know, your teammates are going to see you having a private conversation and, you know, you discussing you're nervous. That's not really something that maybe you want other people to see. But I feel like now with COVID and I can just send coach a a text or an email, hey, can you hop on a Zoom for five, 10 minutes? And, and we can have that conversation and it's much more private. So I think there's much more of an opportunity now more than ever to be able to have those difficult conversations with your coaches and connect with them. You guys are awesome. It's one of the most gratifying things about being in, in coaching is you continue to learn and grow from working with with student athletes like, like the two of you. And um, I know that one of the things that we hope to do both as a department, as coaches, but also empower our athletes to do is really, really take a step back and, and realize that we can't fully understand what anyone else's lived experience is like and being able to ask those questions and really come from a place of support, love, curiosity, and understanding really helps to create that, that and foster that inclusive and supportive atmosphere that we're all striving for. That is, that is good for so many reasons. You know, if we, if we want to be through the highly competitive win championships lens, um, a team that's firing in all cylinders and is really supportive is going to be there um, in that space. So um, huge thanks to both of you for, for being here and engaging in this conversation and, and sharing what you did. I want to thank everyone for tuning in um, and listening. And I look forward to seeing everyone next time on our next episode of Leaning Into Discomfort. Mm -hmm.